Nana Ekia the prophetess. Today I am prophesying into your life that whosoever that will sit and plot any evil against your life, anybody that will plan to accuse you in such a way that you will lose whatever position that you have as a child of God this evening by the power of the blood of Jesus that has been given unto us as children of God to stumble over scorpions and serpents by the power of the blood of Jesus. You overcome it in Jesus name. Say Amen. Wonderful viewers, this is your girl Nanaka Itifu and once again you're welcome back to my channel. So I'm a Ghanaian based YouTuber. I blog about lifestyle, fitness and practical experiences that inspire people. Today on my practical life experience series, I'm going to share with you why my own director called me a stripper. Yeah, you heard me right. Start with how I even got the job. I had a dream that I've kind of like somebody has taken me to a place where the person they were kind of like a church and they were praying and I was like I was lost. And somebody took me to a place, they were worshiping and they were praising God. And the person took me to somebody and then told me that I shouldn't worry. Everything that I need is going to be provided and whatever that I would need will come from this place. So I said, okay. All of a sudden, boom, I woke up. I was lying on my bed. And three days later, I think three days or two days later, a cousin of mine, if you have watched my series, you know that cousin I'm talking about. A cousin of mine who I used to stay with that the mom sacked me from their house. If you have watched my previous Runaway series, you know the story. So she called me and she told me that, oh, that's a school that needs workers, that needs teachers and all that. I said, oh, me, I'm not really a fan of teachers, but remembering the dream that I had, I said, okay, fine, let me give it a try. So I packed my stuff and I went for the interview. To go with the glory when I got there, they didn't even interview me. The boss wasn't around, so that the, the daughter of the owner of the school asked me some few questions and then later on she asked me to start working and the dad will come and then she'll come and he will come and interview me. I said, okay, no wahala. The father came, she called me and he said, oh, I don't know what the man saw in me. The moment he saw me, he said, okay, you yeah, are welcome to the family. I said, okay. Thank you. And he explained the nature of the job and I said, okay, it's a teaching job and all that. I said, okay. At some point in time, I even went to do administration job because I did the diploma in computer secretaryship. So I went to do administration job aside the teaching job of which they were paying me child attendance salary. But no one has. Before you talk about any man of God, remember, before the God, there was a man. Definitely there was a man before the God. So if you want to say anything, remember and reference the man. Don't attach it to the God. So I will say that man. So I went to work at this church. It was a church and a school. And you know, literally, if you work in the school, you are practically a worker in the church too. You wake up and go and sweep the church and help to arrange and stuff and do one or two things on Sunday. And you go to church every Sunday. The fact that you are living in their apartment, you are going to church every day that there is going to be a church service literally you are good you cannot exempt yourself unless you are living outside the school premises but i was living in the school so i was there but you know what i was so glad to work in the house of the lord because at that very moment i needed something because there was something that was really missing in my life so me being in the church was kind of like something that my spirit really wanted just to get close to God. I don't know if you really understand what I'm trying to say. So I was praying. Like we would, the workers would wake up at dawn, in the evening, in the morning, and we'll be praying. So this whole story, I was with one lady and then one gentleman. So we were three people. So we went to eat. I don't know those of you in Accra if you know a place called MP's Flats or Sakumono Complex. Eh? Kind of like a bar and a restaurant. So we went to eat Banco and Tilapia. Trust me, I didn't even know that these two people, the guy and then the lady, they wanted to go out. So they were kind of like talking and they wanted to go out. So me, after the food, I was just giving them some space 
So I was just standing by a car. And I, I won't blame her for what she did because standing by a car in the evening, probably. But I don't know what at all will influence that idea. Because I'm not that type that I can say I can wear anything anyhow, dress anyhow. No, you can't get me on that. I, I grew up in a Pentecostal home and you can understand when somebody says you grew up in a Pentecostal home. So I was literally like a creepy girl. So I was giving them the space. So I stood by a car. Not knowing my director has seen me. And when I say director, the daughter of the owner of the so I didn't even see her. When we got to the school premises or our apartment, the security man didn't open the door for us. So the security man came and he told us that information from above reaching him is that we are not supposed to allow into the premises that evening. Why? Nobody knows. Nobody is giving us why. So at that very moment in the evening, we should go and look for a place to stay. Who does that? So to God be the glory, there was this apartment opposite the church and then the school. There was this man that lived with her daughters there. So the daughters and then the man, they kind of like liked me. That's how God has favored me. Everywhere I go, the favor will follow me. So whenever that the devil will plan against me, it will surely not succeed in Jesus' name. Say amen to that. Yeah. So I called the man and I told him that, okay, this is a situation that I'm facing and I need a place to lay my head for the night. He said, oh, that's fine. That's okay. Your friends are there so you can come over. So I went with the lady. We went to sleep and the next day we went to the school. What I was expecting the woman to do is to at least allow us to sleep and call a meeting the next day and ask us why this or that nothing so the next morning we went to the school and we went straight to the office to ask what we have done that she didn't allow us to come into our own apartment to come and sleep she called the father to talk to us this is the information reaching him and for that reason you were seen standing at a place that strippers Stand. so in that case he is insinuating that I'm a stripper and as a stripper I can't work in the house of the Lord no wahala hold on but my question is the house of God which people were they made for were they made for angels or they were made for the sinners to me I feel like sinners thieves drug addicts those people they are the people that the house of god was meant for them so why are you then saying that i can't go into the house of god because you have seen me standing by the roadside in front of a car so i'm a stripper no problem no worries i want to pack my stuff and i went to the house as a man of god if your daughter has even come to tell you the story what do you need to do as a man of God? Do you actually need to suck those children? No. To me, I felt like it wasn't right on my part for you to just insinuate or imagine or think that see somebody by the roadside in front of a car means the person is a stripper and you have that warrants the person to be sacked from the job that he is doing, he or she is doing. No. But See, there's a lot of people who are going through the same mess. Some people even end up in prison being accused of something that they know nothing about. In fact, the story if reflecting right now makes me feel like, hello, what happened? What, what, what went wrong? That is why in the early stage of this video, I told you that there are some people that we can call them men of God. But if there's anything happened, remember that there was a man before the God. And this is the man that when I went to the place, he loved me. I took that man like my own father. If there's anything that I don't understand, even in my dream, there are things that I face, I see, and I approach that man. So I was literally seeing that man as my own father. But what that man did to me, 
and my fellow workers i was like no no the house of god were meant for people like us if truly true i was a stripper as a man of god what is your responsibility so today i am asking as a man of god what is your responsibility to the world as a mother what is your responsibility to your child as an elderly sister as a leader of a nation as a leader of a church what is your responsibility to the lost out there this is the question that you have to ask yourself and this is my journey and this is because i left my mother's house i left my hometown and decided to come to the city just to try to find myself i won't blame anybody but all that i'm saying today is that as a man of god there are people that comes into our lives that there's a reason there's a purpose and today i can look back i remember one time i drove my sister's child to the, the the school and that man saw me and he acted as if nothing has happened that man acted as if he didn't do anything and actually called us back and i learned some of the other people that they were served he explained and all that and he wanted them back but me i told him i'm not even coming in the first place for you to even explain or for me to explain myself everything that happens in our lives is for the better Someday we will sit back and reflect on it and have a story to tell as I have been able to share my story of being accused as a stripper just because I went to stand by the roadside to wait for somebody. This is my story. I hope you like this video and I hope this video encourages you no matter the situation that you found yourself in and I hope it, it inspires you and gives you that hope not to kill yourself because at that very moment when I was accused, I was depressed, I was frustrated. But to God be the glory. Today, I think he will see me. I remember when I, you know, I'm, I'm a producer director. So one time we were looking for a guest on the show. And then I recommended him to be on the show. When he was asked if he knows me, he said no. But when that man sees me right now, I'm, I'm his daughter. Can you imagine? That is the world. Today, that, one, that man will see me from far. And not, would not even imagine that. I was that girl that the daughter accused. That is the world we live in. And that is a world of encouragement. Whatever that you've gone through, be assured that it will never last forever. In God's own time, in God's own appointed time, the truth will come out and you'll be liberated. You'll be free. So until we meet again, same time, it's your gonna make here in Tifu. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. And I hope this video has inspired you. Please, if you like this video, give this video a very big thumbs up, like, and share, and comment down below if you can relate. So until then, it's a bye. See ya.